Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Marcus Hanscom, the director of graduate admission here at Roger Williams University, and I'm uh, I'm here as a as kind of supporting act for Cami Baker Clancy. She's um, from SUNY Empire State College in New York, and she's our current education chair for NAGAP. And just going to give you a, an opportunity to hear a little bit about some tips and tricks and things uh, that you'll need to know about the upcoming conference and. Uh, kind of on behalf of NAGAP, I'll say we really appreciate you all contributing your talents and your skills and thoughts to um, what looks to be a fantastic conference, as as we're always excited to assemble every year. Uh, so we appreciate all of your contributions uh, to it thus far and what you'll be contributing down in New Orleans. We're really excited um, for the very sessions that we have for students, or for attendees, I should say. <laughs> I'm so used to the attendees, or to students. Um, if you look on the right side of your screen in the GoToWebinar box, you can ask questions in the questions box there. So if you have any questions during or after the session, feel free to enter them there. And Cammie and I will be sure to get to them as, as we go. So just a quick couple of quick logistical items as far as the agenda. Uh, we're going to go over some important stuff for you as a presenter first, and also give you some guidelines and suggestions for your various types of sessions, because there are uh, different types of sessions that are offered, as you know. Uh, also give you some kind of takeaways and answer any questions uh, that you might have for the upcoming conference. So at this point, you should have received the PowerPoint template, um, and we're using that template here, so you should be able to get a sense of how it's going to kind of flow for you. Uh, if you have any trouble with the template, feel free to email me, because um, I'm the one who tends to put the template together, and sometimes that's a blessing and a curse. So feel free to direct your um, your good praise here, and otherwise talk to Christy at NAGAP if you hate it. <laughs> so um, if you have any questions on, um, your abstracts and things, we'd be happy to help you with that as well. Um, your edits should have been um, provided back to you and your abstracts provided back to you and uploaded in Precis, so you can see everything on the Precis site. Make sure that by April 4th that you upload your final PowerPoint presentation for the Precis site. We'll make sure that it's uploaded in your room uh, during the conference. Unfortunately, as in most years, we don't have Wi-Fi available throughout the meeting rooms in the conference. Uh, but if you need internet, uh, if you request it, it'll be provided to you. And then we should be able to make hardwired accommodations for any of you that need internet uh, to support your presentation. So if you know that ahead of time, uh, it'd be great to just shoot a quick email over to Christy Ross at, at um, Kellen or to Cami or myself. Just let us know that you need internet and we'll make sure that uh, that's honored for your room as best as we can. Um, if you have any updated files that you need to show, and this includes anything like handouts and things, so maybe you want to bring up a chart on the screen or your PowerPoint, uh, bring it all on a flash drive and we can load that for you at the time of your session. Um, try to do that a few minutes before your session so we have some time. Uh, if you're using any video files that are not on YouTube or something and you haven't arranged for uh, internet access, any large video files, multimedia files, would have to be um, brought in on your flash drive and loaded natively to the computer just because they can't run. Uh, they're not stored within a PowerPoint session. Uh, if you have not already, be sure to register for the conference and book your hotel room. Um, I believe we're almost full at this point. Um, Christy can confirm that. Christy, you're still there? Yes, and we are pretty full. So if you haven't made your reservations, please do so pretty soon. Okay. Thanks, Christy. And at this point, I'm just going to switch it over to uh, Cami to have her get started on some of the content for the conference and things to think about for your session. Thanks, Marcus. Well, our theme for this year's conference is Sustain and Innovate, From Strong Foundations to Creative Solutions. Um, and every year, we have a theme that we utilize for all of our educational um, offerings that we have for the annual conference, for our professional development institutes, for any webinars that we offer. And uh, we try to tie those themes back to the strategic plan. And we've actually just um, revisited our, our new strategic plan um, and tied the themes that we have for the next four or five years for our um, our educational offerings. So, you know, this one in particular, I think, is just really hits the mark with the, the kind of um, sea change that we're seeing in graduate education and the constant uh, changes that we're all having to deal with. So how do you sustain enrollment uh, and innovate at the same time? So I think it's really a, a telling um, theme for us to use and 
certainly this year we had probably the most uh, proposal submissions than we've had in many years. Uh, was very, it was way over what we had for last year. We were kind of surprised by the amount of uh, really great proposals, so uh, we couldn't accommodate all of them, which we really like to accommodate as many proposals as possible. So it was really great um, seeing just all the creative proposals that people submitted. So for those of you who are on the, the webinar today, uh, thank you very much for, for your creativity and willingness to, to share it with your colleagues. We're really looking at elements of a successful session. Uh, we have three different types of sessions that people are going to be doing, uh, not just presentations and panels, but also uh, what we call special interest forums. So when you're thinking about the type of presentation that you're gonna be doing, the type of session you're running, really um, try to prepare your audience ahead of time. You can um, email them, you're able to uh, get a list of people who might have predetermined they want to attend your session. Uh, you can get that list from Christy when it gets closer to, um, to the conference. So if you want to send them a, a, an email about your session, if you have an article or a to-do list or handouts that you'd like to, to email them, uh, you can do that ahead of time if you want to do a, a little of that work. Um, Always in your sessions, uh, make sure you have a quick introduction, introduction with your institution and organizational details, uh, the overview and the agenda of what you're going to be doing in the session, content with a clear beginning, middle, and end with learning objectives. We're really uh, key on learning objectives because you want to be able to have, again, these kinds of learning opportunities and takeaways. Uh, from the sessions that we have at our annual conference. It's sometimes the only opportunity our members have uh, to attend a conference where they get this much direct information on graduate enrollment management and can network with colleagues from across the country and actually from other countries as well. So it's really an opportunity for engagement on large scale and when you're preparing your session, you want to be able to build in some opportunities for engagement within your session even. Um, it's harder to do sometimes, especially if you're in a presentation format, but um, keep that in mind. Be very mindful of in what point will I open it up for maybe question and answers uh, with the audience or how will I engage them in different ways. Always give a recap of your key elements and takeaways towards the end of your presentation. Uh, either before or after the Q&A. And as I mentioned before, if you can provide extra resources like bibliographies or links to articles or videos, that's really important too. Because again, you know, we're all in a situation where we have to really um, validate the kind of professional development we're doing with our supervisors at work. And so you want to be able to bring back as many resources and good information as possible to show the value of attending a conference like uh, the NAGAP Annual Conference. Now these are key things that um, seem pretty obvious, but we like everyone to make sure that they at least provide in the beginning of their session some information about the presenters. Um, do you work for a private or public institution? Are you um, are you, you from a school of, for example, like I'm from an engineering school or a business school within a university? What are your enrollment stats of your graduate school or your program? What type of school are you? Um, it's good, depending upon what your session's about, to give a little overview of the kind of, kind of projects or tools or uh, systems that you use. I have to tell you, the biggest thing for me when I go to a NACAP conference is when I start talking to other colleagues about, okay, what's your ERP system? I mean, what kind of CRM do you have? What are you using for your application review? Um, it's really where you get a whole lot of ideas and also, you know, really um, val valuable feedback upon what are the use of these different systems. And again, it's the only place where you're gonna be in a conference with nearly a thousand people that do what you do and it's a great opportunity to, to pick people's brains. So if you have a little bit of information you could provide about uh, 
your institution and what you use. Uh, I think that's very helpful, as well as what kind of gem structure is at your institution. Are you a centralized or decentralized um, graduate school? Um, are your operations merged with undergraduate? Uh, what kind of GEM services do you provide to your students? Um, these are all important aspects if you can incorporate them into you know, the beginning of your, your presentation. And then learning objectives. Um, I know you've done this, as, as Marcus uh, mentioned before, you've probably already updated everything in Precis because I think that the time frame has passed for you to do that. But it's always important for you to, again, to review your learning objectives, to make sure that your content is aligned with, um, you know, your topic area, with the theme of the conference, et cetera. It should be clear and concise, easy for people to understand, uh, certainly actionable. Um, and again, we kind of emphasize this a lot in our presentation, but if you really could integrate those key takeaways, um, that's really an important aspect. And as always, if you're going to um, provide information for the attendees here at the conference, you want to be able to reinforce that with data and research if you've done that. I think that's always, um, you know, people are really interested in outcomes. It's great to come in and talk about what you're doing at your campus, or if you're initiate if you initiated a specific, you know a particular event or process at your institution. But to be able to reinforce that with data and research um, makes it just that more valuable. And again, you know you would incorporate that into utilizing, um, you know how you actually put this into practice in your at your institution. And as I mentioned before, include actionable takeaways. So if you can really cite specific examples of how you can integrate these uh, new ideas into your work, I think that's key because people sometimes really need to see that kind of visual connection. Um, when you create your session, make sure you're basing it on the guidelines. For example, uh, are you doing a presentation? Are you a panel? Or are you doing uh, a special interest forum? And I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically about those things later on in the presentation. But make sure whatever uh, format you're using that um, it, your presentation really flows with those guidelines. If you're using PowerPoint or Prezi, make sure you integrate the in, uh, images correctly. Um, and make sure you use some more visuals so it's not just what Marcus and I are showing you today, slides with words. You want something that's a little bit more engaging. And then another key item, this is kind of self-explanatory. It's a common sense type of item, but you know, it's something I think we always want to remind ourselves when we're putting together presentations is really using action verbs. So things like modify or create or conduct or um, assess. I also like to use evaluate where you're um, providing a little bit more action in your description. Um, that's an important thing to do. And I think sometimes we don't, we don't think about that when we're writing uh, our presentations or papers, et cetera. So that's just a, a handy reminder of, of how you, we want to uh, really engage, again, our audience. And then, as I mentioned before, think about the type of presentation you're doing. What format are you using? Are you going to be doing a presentation where it might just be you presenting information or um, outcomes from uh, a project that you've instituted at your uh, college or university? Is it a panel where you have a moderator who is um, fielding questions to a few people on the panel? Uh, or are you a special interest forum where you're doing more roundtable? These are uh, important aspects to think about when you're designing uh, your presentation. And Marcus, I'm going to throw it over to you. All right. So, um, you know, Cami's talked a lot about 
kind of the best practices for what you should be doing in front of the room and here's some kind of more tactical pieces. Um, one thing I'll add to that is I remember, and I don't think it was NAGAP, I think it was another conference, but probably about eight or nine years ago, I remember going into the room and we've got probably maybe 60 people there and we've got a single presenter up at the top. And she literally started out and said, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm from this university and this is what we did and proceeded to go step by step with something that they had done. Uh, and then at the end of the presentation, she literally said, and that's how we went from start to finish. And that was it. There was no takeaway. There was no engagement. Um, there were a few questions among the audience, but we all kind of came out of there and went, well, I don't know how helpful that was. So I hope that you think as we got, we've gone through some of the discussions so far, and I know if you've been to these sessions in the past um, that we've gone over kind of the how to's. It's all pretty basic, but at the at the core of it, you want to be able to walk away with something that you you feel like you've been educated, you've been engaged, maybe even entertained, depending on who you've been to. Um, I'm going to give you a suggestion of somebody to look up. Um, this, the person's name, her name is Kendra Hall. Um, it's K-I-N-D-R-A, Kendra Hall. She's a professional storyteller. Um, she spoke at a conference I went to uh, about a year and a half ago. It was one of the most engaging speakers I had ever heard from, and she told stories. Her, her entire presentation was about telling stories. And um, she does a, you know, she sends an email out a few days a week if you want to sign up for her mailing list. But she also, has, there's a lot of YouTube videos of her, and she helps with a lot of marketing. And, and I encourage you to think about as you're presenting how you can tell a better story as opposed to just talking at people or telling them what to do. And the more you can kind of relate a story to your topic, the better off um, you're going to be and the better you're going to engage your audience and give them something of value that goes deeper. And then, of course, if you can offer assignments and takeaways, those things are also extremely high value. But avoid the biographical sketch for an hour or 45 minutes. We want to be able to kind of get something deeper and walk away with something really of value. Um, Tactically on your slides, obviously you want to balance between notes and content. It's PowerPoint 101. You don't want to, don't do what we're doing here. We're overloading text on you. Uh, it's really not a script for you, not something to be prompting you. I mean, it's maybe you put a few quick topics on there, but you want to really want to elaborate and tell stories and go deeper into the content as much as you can. Um, I always tell people too, if you can, think about your entire presentation as a story and where it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and Cami kind of alluded to that, but make sure that there's a logical flow to your ideas and you're kind of starting at the 30,000 foot view level and giving an overview, but going deeper into the topic and finding a kind of resolution at the end where people feel like they've gotten a really good sense of what you're talking about and then they have questions related to that. And uh, give people the option to make some sort of meaningful connection with you. Um, avoid slides that you can't read. Um, 28 point font is relatively standard for minimum size uh, font on, on a PowerPoint slide. Try to avoid anything smaller than that. Uh, if you're using any sort of text or imagery, make sure you've checked in any copyright. Um, you can be, I mean, none of us are profiting off of our presentations at the conference, so there's a little bit of a gray area there, but this is a conference where people are paying and they're going and hearing about best practices and things. And if you're using somebody else's content, you need to make sure you're attributing that. So it's uh, pretty straightforward. There's a lot of good resources on the web if you have questions on that. Um, less is more. It's pretty straightforward. Quality over quantity. We're not looking for you to give us 60 slides in 60 minutes. If you give us 10 slides in 60 minutes and those 10 slides are really the greatest slides we've ever seen, great. Um, and then as you, you might have things that came up through the course of your presentation, or maybe you want to make changes, upload a more detailed version after the pre after the conference. Um, and you can even, sometimes it's good practice to even bring a sign-in sheet or ask people for business cards and you can email them uh, for other resources after your session. Those are all good things uh, to consider. If you use any images, <coughs> excuse me, in your PowerPoint, again, avoid things with small text on them. Uh, take an opportunity to zoom in on them. I'll give you a couple of examples coming up as well. Um, I'm a big fan of high contrast. If you ask my marketing team, they want to strangle me half the time because they're always giving me things that have like a light, lightish color, lightish version of a color and then a darker version of it. And it's really hard to read. 
you really need things that are like black and white or you need a blue on a yellow you know things that stand out that people can read from the back of the room um, i'm trying to recall this particular conference facility i know we were there in 2015 uh, but some of the rooms for um, presentations can be rather long so if you're standing in the way back if you don't have things that are larger and clearer and high contrast, it's hard to see them. Um, avoid things, particularly in, particularly in this day and age, uh, that might have some political context um, that can, in for a variety of reasons, could offend um, attendees or could incite sort of um, responses that you may not have as desirable for your session. So keep things as, as objective as possible. Avoid any images that don't fill at least a quarter of your slide if you're having small images unless they're just kind of um, accents to the actual content. Um, make sure you use things at least a quarter of the slide or larger. I'm not personally opposed to having images that occupy an entire slide and allow you to kind of tell a story or talk about them because people like visuals. So if you have something that's purely visual and then you're talking them through content, that's not a bad thing. I've seen sessions that are almost entirely images where they're just talking, but the images are supplementing what they're talking about. So depending on what you have, that may be a good cat tactic as well. And again, make sure you're attributing anything that you took from somewhere else. This is a <coughs> an example that, that Linda had provided um, a couple years ago from Fordham, um, that if, if you're showing, for example, an image like this, where you're showing the uh, inquiry form that students filling out, this might be hard to read in the back uh, between the text and the small boxes. But if there's something you want to show, maybe you'll zoom in on it like this and bring this uh, image up to um, give you a little bit more detail. Similarly, we did that here with Roger Williams. Um, this is one of our, our former cell pages. We've now gone mobile, so we're at the 21st century. Um, but if you zoom in, you can show things. Uh, and these are all animations that are built right in the PowerPoint. They're very easy to use. And you can crop right in PowerPoint as well, so you don't need any image skills. You can simply duplicate your image and crop it to the size you want and then just zoom in on it. Uh, so you can do a lot of good things right in PowerPoint without any technical know-how uh, before that. And I see a rah-rah for Fordham, so yeah, Fordham. Uh, best practices for video. Um, there's a lot of different resources that you can find online. We've got a few at the end of the session um, that we'll tell you about. But here's one you can look at, how to give an awesome PowerPoint. Um, unless you've downloaded it, again, we talked about how much internet access you need for, for um, video. So if you have a video that's posted on a website, you'll obviously need access and we'll work that out for you. Just let us know if you haven't notified us yet uh, where you need that. Um, take Save an extra copy of your, or of your video and your presentation on a flash drive. This is good for everybody, regardless if you need internet access or things. If there's ever a problem, it's good to have a backup. What I typically will do is put a copy on the cloud. So if you have something like Dropbox or Google Drive, um, that's a great resource too. And if you have internet access, you can grab your um, grab your presentation from there. And having a flash drive as a backup doesn't hurt to have a good manual, old-fashioned way of doing it. Um, if you decide to use any kind of video, make sure it's relevant. Uh, it shouldn't be a time eater, and that <coughs> unfortunately is common for a lot of presentations where they're like, how do I fill up 45 minutes? I'm going to take a five-minute video or a 10-minute video. Avoid doing that unless it's something that's really adding quality value. Um, to the session that you're giving. <coughs> the other thing I'll suggest to you is, I'm sure many of you are familiar with TED Talks. Uh, if you look online, there are a lot of great TED Talks, and even regardless of what the topic is, if you just watch some of them, it'll give you a really good sense for successful delivery. You'll find how engaging most of those TED Talks are, and there's a reason for that. They're very deliberate about who they select, the types of topics they select, they're also time limited. Most of them have 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, depending on if it's a regional or one of the national TEDx or, or TED talks. Um, so look at those. You'll see that some of those restrictions are very helpful to making sure that they get exactly the right value content out in front of their uh, attendees as possible. So just take a look at that. There's even a book that's called Talk Like TED. I bought it, but I haven't read it yet, so I can't uh, tell you if it's if it's good or bad. Um, but there are some good resources out there that kind of suggest and, and, and prompt you on what a really good session uh, is going to look like. Obviously, practice makes perfect. Um, they say 10,000 hours. Is, uh, it makes you an expert. Obviously, none of us are going to do 10,000 hours of practice on our presentations, but if you do, 
kudos to you. Um, record your practice session if it's helpful. Uh, critique your performance. I think a lot of us don't realize what we sound like until we hear ourselves back. And um, you know, unfortunately for Cami and I, we've been recorded a lot, so we have to hear our, our voices a lot. Um, but it's helpful as you can kind of think about your delivery and whether you talk too fast, which I know is my problem. Uh, maybe you talk a lot, that's also my problem. You know, things like that that you can be aware of and you can't address those things until you're aware of them. Um, so get feedback, ask somebody if you feel comfortable speaking in front of a significant other or a friend or a colleague, uh, give your presentation to them. Uh, talk about your content, talk about your delivery, and get something really refined that works well. And trust me that really good presentations get noticed, and they get noticed in ways that will help you infinitely in your career. Um, obviously, being a good public presenter um, is helpful in your work, but if you provide a really good session, they can lead to job dividends, it can help you connect with the right people and professionally in your personal and professional development. There's a lot of good opportunity with good sessions. So, um, and at the very least, we wanna make sure we get everybody a really great session uh, that comes to your, your presentation at the conference. So I hope that's helpful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it back over to Cammie and have her talk to you about special interest forums. Thanks, Marcus. And you know, what Marcus just went over for um, with his several slides really are relevant to the panels or um, specific presentations if you're using those types of formats. And certainly uh, some of it is also um, relevant for creating a special interest forum, but the special interest forums are a little bit different. You may not have you know, a PowerPoint presentation. You might just be um, presenting the topic discussion um, before you break into the roundtables. So really the special interest forums are, are roundtable discussions that um, are focused on a specific topic of interest that's selected in advance. The format should really maximize the opportunity for you to have some open dialogue among the attendees. Um, participants then can share their experiences and thoughts and best practices depending upon what, again, what your topic, question, or uh, theme is. So you could really approach this in multiple ways. Um, my suggestion for maximizing the interactivity of this kind of format would be to start off with a presentation or a, of your topic and specific questions in mind that you can stage maybe at each table. And you could do that ahead of time so that um, you know the information's right there in front of the participants. Um, then, you know, to be able to really facilitate the discussion, the participants, participants that you have uh, presenting, you know, it might be a small group, it might be only two or three, maybe four people, uh, could then go around to the tables of participants and facilitate um, and clarify the questions and actually kind of move things along. The most important thing, though, uh, with this kind of format is the time management element. You want to be able to have enough time to present your uh, topic, to have your roundtables really be able to talk with each other and have discussion, but then also have enough time to report out to the larger group and then maybe tie in uh, more of a discussion and then a, a conclusion at the end. So I think uh, the ones that I've attended at our annual conference, I did. I attended one a few years ago that was specifically on combined or joint degree programs. And the facilitators presented their information that was very specific to their institution, and then some questions that they had for the, the larger group. And then we, um, we discussed those in our different round tables. And then the final was about 20 to 25 minutes of review of the questions that were predetermined and the different answers that people from the various tables had. Um, and it was really good because it was an opportunity. You actually were doing more networking as well as talking about a really specific topic uh, in a way that wasn't, you know, just um, you know, just a, a group of people presenting that information for you. You really were part of the discussion. So we do have quite a few uh, special interest forums this year. So anyone, I don't know if anyone on the call today is, is doing a special interest forum, um, 
but I hope that this information is helpful because I do think, you know, it's a great way also to change up um, the presentation of, of information at these annual conferences. Now we have some tips for presenters. And Marcus has mentioned some of these previously, yeah, so have I, we'll, we'll uh, kind of go over them again. But engagement is like our big theme here. We really want people to be um, really involved in the presentations. So um, keep an eye out of how you're presenting, of making sure that even if you're in a large room and you have 75 or 80 people in your session, because that can happen, that you really uh, have more eye contact with them, et cetera, even if it's a large group. And again, avoid the lengthy bio information because that really kind of can eat into your time frame of actual discussion of your topic. Um, so that's a key item. Um, again, provide steps and actions, anything that you have where you can really uh, show how you implemented something and what the result was and what that participant in your session might be able to do in their home school. Um, I think is very important. Data, uh, results, successes, and failures, because people need to know um, you learn a lot from failure. So I think those are important things to share with the group as well. It shouldn't always be sunshine and roses. It should be, here's here's a uh, initiative we uh, tried to, to do, and here's how it failed and why. Uh, those things are important too. Again, uh, really kind of gauging your session so that you have time for Q&A is going to be key. Um, and if you do have multiple presenters, if you're either doing a presentation or a panel discussion and you've got multiple people, again, make sure that you're mindful of uh, how long people are talking and moving your presentation along so that you don't get stuck or run out of time and not be able to have the kind of a discussion that you wanted at the end of your presentation. Um, I like this uh, item too, uh, when you pose an open-ended question, because you get a lot of different responses back from people too with that, which I think is very good. Um, we really are trying to get people to post and tweet uh, on our hashtag NAGAPLearns. You know, I don't know if you guys look at uh, Twitter a lot, look at the different hashtags, but I always like to follow different conferences that I can't attend and follow their hashtags because that you get a lot of information from those back channels. And people who can't attend, this is a really way for them to keep connected and see what's going on and sometimes add to the conversation as well. So we try to do that a lot. Uh, we often will give um, prizes for people that we see are uh, tweeting the most about different sessions at NAGAP. But again, it's a really great way to um, keep the conversation going because sometimes after the conference, uh, you know, you meet people and you want to really have more in-depth discussions about some of the, the presentations that you went to. Next one, Marcus, what do we got? Support systems. Now, when you do your presentation or panel or a uh, special interest forum, you're not alone because you will have a moderator assigned to you for each session and the moderator really kind of takes care of the room for you. If you have handouts, they can facilitate um, distribution of the handouts. They're the timekeeper. So they'll be able to let you know, hey, you're halfway through your session. And that's uh, a good visual cue, especially if you're in the front of the room and they're in the back of the room giving you time. Um, so that you, again, don't let the session get away from you and not be able to cover everything that you've included. We also have a recorder for each session and the recorders um, actually do a, a write-up or a summary of your session. And it's great, um, it's a great way to capture what you've put together. It, uh, we normally put it together in, uh, and publish it in our perspectives uh, journal. Um, which normally it's the summer issue that we put a lot of those in. Well, we split them over a few um, this last year, I think, of publications. But it's a great way, again, to have your session in writing. Um, you can ask the recorder to connect with you so that you could do a review before it's posted. There's nothing wrong with asking for that because 
obviously the recorder wants to make sure all the information is correct too. And certainly you do because you put the time and energy into developing your presentation and, um, and you want to make sure that uh, it has all the right information in it. And then lastly, um, keeping the conversation going. We're looking at different ways that people can do that. Certainly you can collect business cards. Uh, you can tell people who attend your session, hey, leave your business card and we'll get back to you. If you want to start a little uh, email listserv group or, um, you know, meet up during the conference at some point um, to talk further about your, your topic area. Uh, you can also post to uh, the NAGAP Facebook page. You can post to our NAGAP LinkedIn. You can tweet information about this. This will also be able to keep people in the loop uh, and keep those connections going. In fact, I just went to the, um, the winner uh, professional Development Institute and several people gave me their business cards and have already emailed me about things that we talked about at lunch. So it's really great to have that opportunity to kind of develop your network of colleagues across the country and internationally. Um, you know, it's a great sounding board for you to develop. If you have questions or you're going through an, a situation at your institution, you've got this network now of people. So again, it's a it's a broader issue of keeping that conversation going. And Marcus? Well, we have to remember that we all work in education. Um, and Linda and I said this for years. It's something we reiterate every year in this 101, but make sure that people are having ways that they can make really engaged opportunities to learn from you, get they derive value. They take things away that are actionable at work. Um, those are really critical. It, you know, we have the same types of, um, you know, we talk about pedagogy and outcomes in all of our classes, and many of us aren't academic faculty, but if at least we put that kind of lens on when we're preparing these sessions and hope that people come away with a similar outcome. If you were providing a certificate for the session that you gave, um, could you justify that you've provided a level of content and know-how uh, to the attendees uh, that would justify giving them a certificate? And arguably, if you can't, um, I'd say you need to kind of go back to the drawing board and make sure that you're providing uh, some really helpful outcomes for the people um, coming to your session. Uh, it's really critical, Cam, kind of touched on this, but at the end of your session, provide your name or your presenters, everybody's names that are presenting, your affiliations, your contact information, um, website. And I encourage you to include a photo too, because if people are taking this session back later on, or as many of you know, if you've gone to previous sessions, if you're an attendee, but you can't go to every session, which we can't be omnipresent at each at each time frame, we often go onto the Priestess site and download a slide deck from somebody else. And if you can at least put a name with a face and reach out, and if you get contact information, you have questions for a presenter, that's a great way to do that at the end of the session. Um, and they lead to an innumerable number of opportunities um, professionally and personally for you. And just having those contacts are really important. So in that light, um, here's my uh, photo as well as Cami's and our information here. Uh, that photo is a few years ago for me. So Cami, you can keep your jokes. I know you're probably going to point out young. I was going to say you look like a very young <laughs> professional. <laughs> Um, I still look young, I think, fortunately, but don't look quite the same. Um, so if any of you have any questions at all related to the conference or getting your presentation together, or if you want to bounce your slides off of us or objectives or questions, anything we can do for you, uh, feel free to use us as a resource and we're happy to do that. Also, Christy Ross is one of the many uh, talented and really helpful um, part of the Kellen family that run kind of all the administrative back end to support everything that NAGAP does and they are really uh, the lifeblood of getting everything done that we need. So if you have any logistical questions for conference um, and things with your getting your session uploaded and um, if you want to get your participants list and all those types of things, Christy can help you with that. And we provided her email. I should have put it here at the end. I didn't even think to do that. Um, but it was at the beginning, uh, early part of our slide. So we can provide that to you as well. Uh, and she can answer any questions you have. So 
At this point, um, are there any lingering questions that you have either of things that we covered today or not covered today that we can hopefully answer for you and anything logistical, uh, Christy's on the line and can answer those for us as well. So, uh, the question is, would it be appropriate to send a survey out to our participant list? Um, I personally don't have an issue with that. I don't know if Cami or, or Christy, you have any, I mean, I would, I would obviously make it optional and, and, be it that it's a helpful thing, but if it's something that you're able to create value at your session, I'd say it's probably a good thing and just tell people that you're going to use the results to help uh, inform the discussion and make a better presentation. Um, Cammie, any thoughts or Christy? I think um, it's a great idea. Or anyway, go ahead, Christy. We've had people do that before, so that's not you unprecedented. Know, and then that way you're you're kind of creating you're creating the uh, excitement before the conference even starts, and also it, it helps you really kind of fine tune your presentation because you know what people are mostly interested in. Then, so I think it's a really great idea. Thanks, guys. Are there any other questions? That was the first one. Oh, what time frame what time frame should I use to send? Presumably, send the email with the survey out. Um, I mean, given that we're we're about to, we're just under two months away from the conference at this point, and um, I mean, I'd imagine depends on how much time you would need to prepare your slides. And I know people are still registering for the conference, so I would imagine you might want to wait a little bit from now. Christy might be able to inform us better, but um, until you have a sense of really who's Said there tentatively going to your session so you have at least a, a small or a large enough end to be able to get anything out of them. Uh, Christy or Cammie? Uh, I would say if you can wait till about four weeks out that would be the best um, as far as attendance goes that would be the best bet because that's about the time we cut off registration it's about four weeks out. And you still have time because um, April 4th is the due date for you to have like if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation or, or have handouts, you know, that's um, the time frame of when you have to have that uploaded. So I think, you know, you have definitely have enough time to be able to do that and to get some meaningful feedback. Great. Thanks, guys. And um, speaking of surveys, hopefully, um, no, those were all great questions. So not this came from one, one uh, attendee here, but th those are really good and helpful quality questions. So thank you for those. Um, but speaking of surveys, hopefully you all got in your email um, a survey request this morning from NAGAP. So if you have a minute, make sure you fill that out because that will inform a special new guide that NAGAP is working on um, with Carnegie uh, Dartlet. And they've got a partnership with Google that's going to help inform it. So we've got some great opportunities to connect with um, some data out there now. And I think the survey sounds like a great idea for your session and other sessions if you wish to do that. And that will be actually informing one of the sessions at NAGAP coming up. So I guess quickly what I'll do is I'm going to bounce over. We have a couple of quick resources on, actually more than a couple, but a few resources on here. And you don't have to write these down. We'll get these out to you. <coughs> but these are some resources that you'll find on the web to help you with de developing your presentations. And I know many people, um, if if my memory serves me right in the past, we had a lot of people that came to this session but reached out to Cami or I um, offline and that, or Christy, and that's totally fine. So if you have questions that you don't want to ask in the public format now, uh, feel free to ask us more directly. And I know we've helped refine presentations before, give feedback, and we're help, happy to do that in an offline context. I don't see any further questions at this point. Um, so again, thank you for your time. Thanks for your expertise and for contributing to the conference. We're really excited to have you all on board. And we're looking forward to seeing you in April. So is there anything you yeah. want to add, Kimmy? Just got, we'll, we're excited to see Enola. So let's get psyched because it's uh, only a couple months away. So. Yeah, coming up. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day and we'll see you in just under a couple months.